Hey guys, Dennis Slater Magic here, and it's time for a very overlooked but very awesome card. You know how um, red has world fire, it costs like nine or something outrageous like that, and it destroys everything in play. I mean everything. It takes the lands with it. Um, I'm pretty sure white has one just like that. I totally don't remember what it is. I know it's up there in the cost though, but I think people somehow found a way to play it with that cheese stands alone clone. Because it, it, seriously, it blows up everything. I feel like green actually has something really similar too. I'm, I'm not sure. But these mega ultimate board wipes where if you are actually playing magic on an actual wooden board, you can wipe it because there's no permanents left. I mean, you kind of take out your library and your graveyard and your exile pile too, but you know, you get the idea. So what if I told you that blue had one too? Um, that's a little surprising because... You know, destroying the whole board isn't really Blue's thing. I mean, they're big on, like, bouncing things back to hand. I mean, I would say, you know, Aether Spouts, um, Cyclonic Rift, I guess. You'd have to overload it. And then there's, you know, Engulf the Shore, Whelming Wave. Um, there's a million different versions of that. But they all put it either back on top of the person's library, on the bottom of the library... Or, like, pins it down, changes it into a frog or something else with a polymorph, or bounces it just straight up back to hand. Well, technically this one's no exception, but oh my god does this take it too far. And I have not heard about this card until very recently, so it's arguably a little bit overlooked. I mean, it was in From the Vault Annihilation 2014, so famous card, obviously. They do not pick obscure cards for that, usually. It was originally printed as a rare in Odyssey, and then after that, it was only ever in Vintage Masters as a mythic. Surprising, I know, that Vintage Masters was a thing that existed. A lot of people have never heard of that, no joke. So without the reprints, it was only truly printed once. Uh, let me say, though, the artwork from the From the Vault Annihilation, oh my gosh. All they did was take the original one and just make it look better. Some of you already know what this is. I'm talking about the six cost blue sorcery upheaval. I mean, I'm starting to think that every color truly has one spell that people just see it and they're like, why did you do this to the game? You blew it up. Oh, damn you. You damn dirty apes. That's what it makes your opponent say when you play it. Well, not a lot to this one. Six costs, double blue, four generic, it's a mythic, sorcery, return all permanents to their owner's hands, no exception. Yep. I love the flavor text too, that's the best part. The calm comes after the storm. So, theoretically, you could be the first one to replay a land, and then you might have an ETB effect that wins the game. But then it's like, why didn't you just do that then? Like... Is it like a landfall effect? But there's there's more you could do with this card than with World Fire. That's what I'm trying to get at. World Fire, if you want to take advantage of it yourself, you either have to be running a really fast stack, because duh, or have like a Rift Bolt on Suspend or something. Now this leaves everything else the same. There's still the same amount of you know health on each player, or life, depending upon how you want to refer to it. I've heard both. Um, poison counters, graveyard state, everything. Uh, the only other problem is, okay, you can maybe redrop a land and maybe redrop a creature. Maybe cast a one cost spell or drop some kind of land that generates two or do some kind of combo, drop it a bunch of zero costs, you know, whatever. Um, I'm sure this is in use in some kind of zero drop deck because why wouldn't it be? But other than that, the downside is you're going to be the first person to drop cards into your graveyard if you're above seven cards, because your end step will happen first. Oh, look at me, now even I said it wrong. <laughs> okay, people have been saying this since the beginning of the game, and I don't think it's ever been correct. You discard down to seven during the cleanup step, not during the end step. I should really stop saying that it happens during the end step, because it just doesn't. That's important because um, no player receives priority during the cleanup step, so um, abilities can't be used, spells can't be cast, nothing. I mean, it's just, you know, nobody can say, oh, you discarded down to seven, now in response, or just before the end of turn, no, sorry, end of turn already happened. 
So anyway, yeah, you'll be the one to start ditching cards, but if you throw out like a one cost enchantment or artifact or something that says every time you discard a card, do this. Okay. I mean, assuming that exists. So there's all kinds of fun stuff you could do with this. I'm sure you guys know the combos a lot better than I do. I'm just throwing stuff out there in the dark, but, um, yeah, this just looks like fun. I mean, it, it would completely ruin the game if you just put it in to be a troll, like in your commander deck. In fact, it would be especially trolly because it's banned in Commander. I could see somebody casting this like for free or late game or just, oh, I'm losing the game. So <laughs> screw you guys. I mean, what's wrong with that? That's classic. That is classic Commander behavior. I don't know about your play group. So all I know is that the Gatherer website says it's banned in Commander. I don't know if it's like the, the one versus one or the duels or whatever they call that versus multiplayer. I don't know, whatever. I mean, banning something Commander is pointless because your playgroup decides what's legal and what's not. It's a casual format. Who cares? Oh, also, you should probably have about the same level of respect for the people who maintain the Commander ban list as I do. They are crooked, selfish, and possibly completely clueless. So yeah, I mean, if your friends agree to this, which, I mean, they'll read the card and they won't, um, this would be kind of fun to throw in, but otherwise it's not legal and modern because of its age. That's a shame. So dust off your vintage deck. Just kidding. But overall, I mean, not every card has to be playable in this set. I just thought it was overlooked because, duh, nobody plays it. And awesome because, oh my God, is it awesome. Pretty simple parameters there, folks. All right, now we've come to the time of the video that I like to throw in, looking it up. Now, here's the thing. It's old as hell, and it was a mythic in Vintage Masters, but I also happen to know the From the Vault Annihilation price for the entire set. Not one of the better ones, which is a real shame, probably because they didn't put Damnation in it, and they should have. I mean, come on, noteworthy cards that everybody knows about that blow stuff up? Really? You don't put Damnation in it? Oh my god, is Wizards clueless. Anyway, um, yeah, I looked it up. It's about $2.25. So $2.25 for a From the Vault Ultra Premium Foil. Yes, please. I might actually pick up a copy of this sometime. Might just wait till my uh, free eBay credit rolls around, though. I got a lot of that coming. Hopefully some of you out there appreciate this card as much as I do just for what it is because it's just so cool. I'll see you guys next video.